Hello, Exploratorium members, and welcome to Storytime Science with bonus family activity. Today we're going to be reading a story, and that story is Now What? A Math Tale. This is a story about shapes, because remember, math is not just numbers, math is also shapes. And then we're going to be doing an activity. And the activity will be based on today's episode, which is the Tremendous Triangle. Now What? A Math Tale by Roby H. Harris. And illustrated, that means the pictures, are by Chris Chatterton. Let's open our book. Here we go. Ooh, nice orange flyleaf page. Now what? A math tale. And there is the star of our tale. There is Puppy. And she's got a big purple bag full of something. Let's see what it is. <gasps> the big purple bag is full of different shapes of blocks. Wow, blocks, lots and lots of blocks. Hey bear, this one's long, long enough for a snooze, wide enough. Look, one, two, three, four corners, one, two, three, four straight lines, two are long, two are short, Hey, this is a rectangle. A rectangle on top and a rectangle on the bottom, upside down, downside up. It's still a rectangle. Surprise, every side's a rectangle. Hey, it's a rectangle block. Oops, too short for a snooze, too short for me, too skinny. Okay, I need one more long one, just like this one. Oh, and look, there is Teddy Bear, constant companion of Puppy, kind of just relaxing with his back against the block. While well, Puppy does all the work. Oh no! There is only one rectangle block. Yikes! Wait, well, maybe this one? Look, one, two, three, four corners. One, two, three, four straight lines, all the same size. Hey, this is a square. Whoa, a rectangle has one, two, three, four straight lines and one, two, three, four corners. Oh, this is a rectangle that's square. And there's a square on top and a square on the bottom, upside down, downside up. It's still a square and it's still a rectangle that's square. Surprise! Every side is a rectangle. See, it's a rectangle block that's a square block, too. What if... Nope, still too short. Way too short for a snooze. One more. One more square block. Yep. Long enough. Nope, too skinny, not wide enough. Too skinny for me. I need more square blocks now. Oh no, no more rectangle blocks. No more square blocks. Now what?
Oh, look, Teddy Bear is feeling very dejected, too. I hope it works out. <gasps> oh, more blocks with one, two, three corners, one, two, three straight lines. Hey, they're triangle blocks. Look, triangle on top, triangle on the bottom, upside down, downside up. Surprise, it's still a triangle. Okay, one big triangle block right here. One more big triangle block here. One small triangle block and one more small triangle block here. One more small triangle block and one more right here. Long enough for me. Now it's wide enough. Hey, I made a bed. Surprise, it's a rectangle bed. Oh, two more blocks. One more rectangle block, one more triangle block. Ooh, extra parts. What's puppy gonna do? <gasps> Done! Cool, puppy made a headboard for her bed. I'm so tired now. So very tired. Dog tired. Okay, bear. Snooze time. Cool story. Very resourceful is Puppy. And look, there's one last picture of Puppy with a triangle block in her mouth. She ended up making squares out of triangles. Very cool. Now let's do the activity. You're going to need your materials first. You need a pack of paper plates and you want to get the very thinnest, very least expensive paper plates that you can find. You know, the kind that if you wear at a picnic and somebody puts some potato salad on one of these paper plates, the plate would just fall apart. You want the really, really thin ones because you're going to be folding them. You also will need a stapler and have some extra staples on hand. And just in case, if you want to decorate this activity once we're done, uh, you want to have some marking pens on hand or maybe some stickers. So I've unwrapped the pack of paper plates and we're using small paper plates today. That's a good, uh, that's a good size. You don't want to use the large ones, although you can, but we'll start with the small paper plates. And you want to carefully take one plate at a time. Sometimes with these very, very thin paper plates, they sort of stick together. So you want to make sure you're removing one from the stack. And you can see that this is a circle. We want to turn this circle into a triangle. And we're going to do that by folding. I am going to make the first fold here. Oh, I'll do it back a little bit so you can see it on camera. And I've made the fold so that this curved edge is hitting right in the middle of the paper plate. Now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to make another fold. We're going to make three folds because we are making triangles. Triangles have three sides and three angles. So now I've made the second Fold. All right, I've got two of my three and I have these two little flaps and you can see it's already starting to look like a triangle. It's kind of looking like a slice of pizza or a slice of pie. Let's make our third fold. So now we have three folds and we have a triangle. I turned a circle into a triangle by folding three times. You want 20 of these in order to do this activity. And that's kind of a lot of paper plates for one person to fold. Don't I know it? Um, but this is the reason to get the whole family involved, or as many people as want to be involved, just so you can all fold paper plates together. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm not going to let you hang out while I fold 20 paper plates. I have a stack of them already folded. 
Now we're going to go flap to flap and we're going to start our stapling. So we're going to take two flaps here and we're going to staple them together. I tend to staple each flap twice just to make them nice and sturdy. One there and one there. So I have two staples, one there and one there. You could use scotch tape too, but I think it's kind of cooler to use staples. Just, um, it's kind of more fun to staple instead of to tape. Now I'm going to take yet another one and here's another flap. And you are working toward always having five paper plates from your center point. This is going to be our center point and we have one, two, three paper plates. I'm going to staple paper plate number four, flap to flap, one, two staples. And so you can see from our center point, we have one, two, three, four paper plates, just enough room for that fifth paper plate. You always, always want to count to five, five from the center point. So now that I have, here's our center point. Now that I have five paper plates, one, two, three, four, five, I can staple those last two flaps together to kind of seal it up. So here we have our first section of five paper plates and you always count from the center. It might be a good idea if you want to keep track counting to just make a little mark on the paper plate once you've stapled it in there. So here's our five. We do not want to just make four sets of these five and then staple it all together. It doesn't work that way. We are going to work from our original here and we're going to start by I'm going to take another paper plate and I am going to staple the flap to one of the flaps of the five. And that's going to give us a new center point. Our center point is now going to be right there. So we already have one, two, three. We only need four and five. So I'm going to keep stapling. four and five. So now that we have five from this center point, see we have five from this center point, one, two, three, four, five. And now I make the center point here and we have one, two, three, four, five. And once again, I am going to do that final staple on that last flap. So now we would just start again from one of the flaps and just staple there and that would make this the center point and you already have three and you would add four and five. So you're just adding to each section. Um, and you can see it's already starting to curve a little bit. I have one that's a little bit more done and yeah, that's already starting to look like it's a ball. And when you get through all 20, remembering to always count to five from the center section, you end up with a ball and it's so cool. It's very lightweight, it spins really well. You can decorate it if you're going to decorate. I would suggest decorating the paper plates before you, before you staple them, certainly, but maybe even before you fold them, because it's a lot easier to decorate with marking pens or to put a sticker on these before you've started assembling your ball. And there we have a nice geodesic ball. Geodesic is kind of an interesting word um, and kind of complicated for, I'm not that great to be able to let you know what it means in much simpler language. It's basically about a shape that's made up of straight lines that are intense in tension with each other. But don't worry about that. You can look up geodesic. It's a very cool word. So here we have the geodesic ball and you don't necessarily need to always do in groups of five to make a ball shape. Say you want to make something else out of triangles. Uh, maybe you want to make a hat 
or you want to make a whole costume. Um, if you're a fan of the 80s, you want to make a jacket that has these shoulder pads made out of paper plates folded into triangles. Uh, the idea is you can do anything you want with these shapes. You can just start building on them. You can make an apartment building for your cat. You might even want to use larger paper plates for that too, or try combining small paper plates and large paper plates. Poetry Corner. I love poems, and I really love to write poems, but I'm not very good at it. So I like to use a kind of a poem where you count the different lines. And that kind of a poem is a haiku poem, H-A-I-K-U. Haiku poems, they don't rhyme. Sometimes maybe they do, but they don't usually rhyme. And there are only three lines. And the first line has five syllables or word sounds. And the second line has seven syllables or word sounds. And then the third line again has five syllables or word sounds. So it's kind of like a math poem. And I wrote a couple for the Tremendous Triangle, specifically the activity we just did. I'm going to read them out loud, and I'm going to count as I read. 20 paper plates. Staple them while counting five. Look at what I made. So there were five word sounds in the first line. There were seven word sounds in the second line. And there were five word sounds again in the third line. So um, I'm going to read the second one because I wrote more than one for Tremendous Triangles. Triangles are strong. I like squares and circles too. But triangles rule. So you can try writing a poem too and maybe you can send us the poem if you've written one on this activity. Thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you next time for episode two of Shape, and that episode is called Let's Build It.